Peter was a courageous boy. Damn, movie kicks off with very little fanfare, no credits, and gets right to the movie. He could feel fear stick to his skin. Narration, but this time it feels super crucial to the plot, so it's good. You know what? This hat is amazing. I'm pausing this movie right now to go to Amazon to order three Troll 2 elf hats right this instant. It's not even a little bit Pinocchio. Who are they, Grandpa? Cruel, deformed forest dwellers. Like Ewoks or Tarzan. Also, a movie inspired by The Princess Bride. Also, this kid's astronomy pillowcase is amazing. Goblins don't need to justify their cruel acts. A movie called Troll 2 wisely removes trolls from the story, unlike its stupid predecessor. Some of the worst special effects slash makeup in film history, but isn't it cute and endearing? Tonight at 6, when Ewoks go bad. Rhymes with Jake Lloyd. Also, THE Drake Floyd, son of Pink. Being so famous and successful that you can let your friends do the soundtrack. Everyone raise a glass to the fakest freckles ever, and the movie that had the balls to try and pass that off as real. Peter immediately fell in love with her. Sounds reasonable. Random strange girl offers Peter Ecto Cooler whipped cream. I bet it was a goblin in disguise! Movie puts the child listening to the story into the action, thereby putting the viewer into the action. I haven't seen this much genius in a film since The Bicycle Thief. Contemplate the awesomeness of this frame. The Joker poster, the Utah Jazz pennant, the basketball-shaped lamp, the Bugs Bunny figurine, the Montreal Expos fandom. I mean, this shot alone is ten sins removed, right? These evil creatures can transform themselves into flesh and blood people. Whenever and however they want. I'm impressed they bother to run around the woods in ugly form then, considering they don't have to. Remove one sin for dedication to the job. They can. They can. Goblins still exist. Finally, a movie that is willing to admit the truth about goblins. Also, a second Daryl Strawberry poster. For reals, another sin removed. And how did Peter end up? Product placement or not, I'm duty bound to unsin Tasmanian devil moments. Unexpected Vulcan is unexpected. And welcome. Green? That's right. The color of the goblins. The color of sap. Movie has the balls to redefine the color of tree sap, and I love it! Wait, this kid likes the A's, the Expos, and the Reds? The f***? Not to mention the f***ing Utah Jazz? And the Mets, 49ers, and Bears? This kid literally supports like one quarter of all the sports teams. This shows amazing diversity for a child character that you just don't see in many movies these days. Also, this is an orgy of evidence that this is a boy's room, but it's a little bit orgier than most, so for that we'll remove one sit. But also, movie predicted Batman v Superman with child's posters 26 years in advance. Don't tell me they ate him, Grandpa! That's exactly what happened. Worst Grandpa ever. I love it! What are you doing still up, Josh? Ah! Human Mom is creepier than the blood-eating plant trolls. This movie's f***ery is on point. Grandpa Seth was telling me to stop- An imaginary Grandpa? Holy crap, this movie just got ten times more intriguing. Difficult for your father, and for Holly, and for me, his daughter. This one line tells me so much, I don't ever have to wonder who's related to who. I can just enjoy the movie now. More movies should be this direct, right Solaris? Montage of Girl is a Girl Bedroom includes pictures of Tom Cruise and Johnny Depp and a Smurf figurine. Yep, she a girl, all right. Also, hot teenage weightlifting action. He tried to turn me into a homo? That's racist. Elliot brought his friends along so they could watch him make out with his girlfriend. That was considerate. It's an exchange. A family from the country is coming to live here, and we're going to live in their house. Movie inspires the incredible Kate Winslet Cameron Diaz docudrama The Holiday. And we never saw a sign of your bow. Ellie's not my beau. Gotta hand it to the movie for using the sophisticated, way more French term beau for boyfriend. Man, this movie is killing it. Hey, how come the driver's side window is open a smidge in the close-ups of Dad, but closes all the way in the shots from the rear of the car? I'll tell you why. This movie is expertly f***ing with our heads. Row, row, row your boat. Ah, how did this movie know Row, Row, Row Your Boat is my favorite song? I'd remove even more sins if it lasted five minutes, but beggars can't be choosers. We filmed the family vacation minivan by literally riding in the bed of a pickup truck ahead of them on the highway while holding a VHS camcorder. Take that, Paul Greengrass. Seriously now, a movie where Coke and Pepsi products can get along together at the same time? It took the power of Troll 2, folks. Remember it this Christmas. Yeah! Dude bros are just the best. Joshua was turning into a tree while two goblins and... What is that? Is that a dead Sam the Eagle? Good! I never liked that asshole. Look guys, I can see the construction paper. But you know what? That's smart, because sticking branches through an actual kid's stomach probably hurts terribly. I Google mapped the place that's clearly written on the back of this license plate, and it told me that it did not know the directions to heaven. Just another great little detail they threw into this movie. <coughs> well, sh this chick has f***ing mastered her spidey sense. Goddamn. Holly flips off her boyfriend, but he can't possibly see it. That's very courteous. Oh, I get it! Nilbog is goblin backwards! Holy crap, that is so clever I'm gonna remove a hundred sins! 
As what happened in a real small town, after the miniman drives off, a dozen goddamn cowboys come up to this one diner's window to watch them drive away. Points for realism. This mirror image of the Waits family tells me all I need to know. That while Josh Waits believes in goblins, the younger son here believes in newsy caps. Okay, so 19 minutes into this movie and I'm trying to figure out what happened to the Potter family from the first Troll movie. Remember? They even had two Harry Potters in that family. Don't believe me? Look it up. Atreyu played Harry Potter. Wait a minute, did Trolls kill Harry Potter's family? I heard a slightly different version. Anyway, remove us in from this movie for no reason. It's got a microwave and video. All the other appliances. The movie spares us the listing of other appliances. Typical country hospitality. Except more green. Even one of the goddamn drinks is green. But fuck it, let's just eat the shit left behind by the creepy people whose baseball told our son they were gonna eat us. Rational decisions for the win. If they eat, they'll come to the same end as Peter in the story. Never before has a movie so personified stupidity. And for that, I'd take a sit off. I don't know if Josh's imaginary grandpa actually stopped time, or if Josh's family actually knows they're eating food with green Play-Doh on it, or if anything I'm watching is real, but I'm guessing that's part of the fun. Why does nobody ever talk about this movie? He only has 30 seconds to stop them, but like a boss, he wastes a lot of that time just staring at them. The movie is inspired by a classic TV show, Out of This World, which ran for 96 episodes, and I love you, Maureen Flanagan. I must do it! Josh pisses on the food to make it more unappetizing. Also, this was the best way he could think of to keep everyone from eating said food. Only everyone had food or drink right at the edge of their mouths. So did he pee on everyone's face? Sorry for asking uncomfortable questions, but logistically, how did this sh play out? Honestly though, movie deserves points for not showing that horror. And you can't piss on hospitality. Legendary line. We'll remove 10 sins for its awesomeness. Tightening my belt by one loop so I don't feel hunger pain. You know, I didn't know that this middle class family relied so much on other people to prepare them food so they don't go hungry. This film really sheds light on the problem of white people that you don't see in most mainstream flicks. I don't know how this tired, slow asshole caught up to the girl who obviously doesn't want to be caught, but I'm gonna remove a sin because maybe I'll get to see a boob. I have never tackled a girl and then had this civilized a conversation. Let me give you some advice, you dwarfs. This is the ultimate testament to the power of boners. All hail King Erection. You give us the power to do really unbelievable things. Even though Arnold was struck right in front of a tree, when we see him again, he's in a treeless grassy field. Movie is tricksy. Drink of it. This dude and this chick actually willingly walked into this place after seeing the smoke and the general sense of danger, aren't weirded out by moaning Myrtle, and drink this strange substance without asking one damn question. That is freaking bravery. And for that, we'll remove 34 cents. Oh no, that they casually drank from the evil school marm turned them into something. But since I'm so lost, I will remove a cent. They're eating her, and then they're going to eat me. Oh my god! Oh my god. Also, a lot of people make fun of this scene, but just think if the woman you just met was turned into a heaping mass of vegetable goo and got eaten by goblins while you were paralyzed from drinking the exact same liquid she drank. Would any of you say anything different out loud? Would you be better actors if this were really happening to you? Of course not. We're removing sins. Hot teenage dancing action! Damn. There's no milk. There's no coffee. There's nothing. Movie accurately depicts life as a teenage RV runaway. All seriousness aside, Elliot really is in love with his friends, right? Movie shows the importance of five seconds of stretching before any exercise. I'm hungry enough to eat a horse. I've been fasting for two days. Did we ever get an explanation as to why the family hasn't been eating, besides Josh's peeing on everything earlier? You know what? The best things in life are things you can't explain. Who the f*** is this jogger? And who the f*** is this cop? Well, f*** you for asking. Just enjoy the movie, you nitpicking jerks. I'm Sheriff Gene Freak. Gene Freak? Really? Are you sure your name's not Scripty McSubtle? Ah, sh what do I care? So long as the entire bonkers plot is spoon-fed to me, which it is. It's amazing to me that no one notices this green shit on all the food in this movie. But it shows that this is a tolerant society, that they don't get caught up in whether a gift sandwich is going to kill them or not. We could learn a thing or two from this, so I remove a sin. Look, I'm just gonna level with you. I sinned the first 42 minutes of this movie last night, and I was drinking wine. And now it's tonight, and I'm back to send the rest, and I legit have no idea who anyone is, or what they're doing. And while we could blame the wine for some of that, can we all just agree that this movie is just bonkers enough that even without the wine, I'd probably be in the same exact situation. Can I help you? Almost certainly not. Hmm, ecto cooler, asshole apples, corn, and Gatorade? Is this the vegan bar where I finally meet Miley Cyrus and have a torrid love affair? Did I say that out loud? Special milk, high in vitamin content. Here is free. Free? Free milk! He said to meet him in the house that looks like an old church. Okay. You can go through the woods. It's only about a mile away. What's outstanding about this movie, and no one ever talks about this, is how the guy finds the house with those directions. You might think I'm gonna send this crazy little shop of horrors lady for talking to her plant and making college fraternity cheesecake, but I'm not. This is basically my childhood right here, and I'm curling up in its bosom. See you later, my little flower. <laughs> That's hilarious. This painting shows God as a cat, looking down on humans, wondering why they aren't offering him treats. That's some accurate religion. 
bog! It's godless spelled backwards! Well, you learn something new every day. Good morning. I am your neighbor. This community is either super friendly and casual about personal space, or else the chick is creepy. I'll reserve judgment for now and call it okay. This kid, who is afraid of everything, is somehow snooping through this creeper goblin building, and I for one salute his courage. Considering the height between the floor and the ceiling, I did not expect a hand to so easily grab Josh's face. Minus one sin for total surprise. Open your mouth, my little friend. Please open it. Look, saying creepy things in unison like this is hard, so I'll remove one sin. Open your mouth, my little friend, please! That's exactly what the sister said to Andy Dufresne. Disturbing reference, but for a quality film, I'll allow it. Stanley cameo is actually pretty harmless here. One sin off. I don't know why the townspeople let Josh and his dad just walk out of here, but so few movies these days show the forgiving side of villains. We need time for some things to happen. <laughs> Greatest line in movie history right there. Christ! What is it? Your sister Holly is with that playboy son of the Coopers. Michael Waits obviously has binocular vision to be able to see his daughter and her boyfriend from this distance. Troll 2 is a secret X-Men movie. They just couldn't call it that for obvious reasons, but that's why this movie is so subversive and great. Guess jeans, the triangle on your ass that said you were somebody for roughly six years or so back in the 90s. Get me out of here, Drew. Just get me out of here. Now, here's where most movies fail, and I want everyone to learn a lesson from this one. Most guys going through the changes of photosynthesis, they'd probably be mostly dead at this point, but this guy views it as a minor inconvenience, as it would be in real life. She swats dude a super long way onto a bed, and while I want to sin her stupid strength, I mean, I feel like sex is about to happen, so... Maybe I should unsin the impending sex. <laughs> As my mentor Ralph Wiggum once said, dying tickles. Oh sweet, the shamrock shake is back. <laughs> Movie accurately depicts what heaven must be like. People that like to party this much can't be all that bad. A little food, they prepared a whole feast. Um, that looks like a table full of desserts and odd colored beverages. Wait, what am I saying? This is a feast. Dig in. They're goblins! Movie isn't given enough credit for the invention of the off-center zoom. Grandpa! Grandpa Seth! Come quick! I've been so preoccupied trying to figure out whether this movie is better than The Godfather, or Citizen Kane, or The Oogie Loves in The Big Balloon Adventure, going back and forth on this argument that I'm not quite sure what's happening here. But I am absolutely certain it's genius. Grandpa Seth appears out of the ether to chop off this goblin's hand, even though I kind of thought that even if Grandpa Seth was real, he was still a ghost, but apparently he's not, so I am stupid. Sin removed for me being stupid. Well, if you're not entertained by this, I'm not sure I want to know you. Oh, f***ing sweet, the hand factory. Scene contains a lap dance in my heart. Yes, they have a Molotov cocktail now, and a fire extinguisher, but why leave the super effective axe behind? Uh, duh, they can dream a new axe if they want. The citizens of Nilbog are truly amazing people. They give the gift of an hour-long country song before they poison this family. Other villains, they just ramble on about their evil plan and not give one f about marathon folk tunes. Go back to hell! Here's another beautiful thing about Troll 2, and I know you guys are tired of hearing me say what a great movie this is, but it must be done. But look, this guy is sending Grandpa Seth back to hell, meaning Grandpa Seth is no angel sent from heaven. He actually went to hell when he died. Movie acknowledges that just because you're a good person who might be a pedophile, you don't get to go to heaven. Artistic blurriness. There's absolutely no reason for this witch goblin reject from Whitesnake video to turn beautiful for whatever plan she has, but who might argue with increased hotness? We'll make our work easier. Otherwise, we'll be forced to kill you violently. Say what you want about these goblins, they always strive to kill humanely. How many of us can say we're that thoughtful when we kill strangers? It would be a shame. The blood would mix with the meat, and we'd have to put them in vinegar for the whole night. I find this movie's incoherence charming. But how do we get him to come? By holding a seance, maybe? Up until now, Josh has had no difficulty in calling Grandpa Seth to help, but movie wisely makes an excuse for a seance scene. Also, science seance scene sans sins. You think it's You Can Leave Your Hat On, but it's actually a similar sounding take on it, and it only improves the song. I was told Randy Newman wept when he heard this version. Joe Cocker considered retirement and Kim Basinger unconsciously undressed when this song was made, as if she felt a presence in the force, a presence she has not felt since. I'm honestly surprised I never before thought of combining sexy dancing, creepy woods, and a single ear of corn, because that is working. Also, seductive corn. Seductive corn holster. Hey, I think she's wearing those weird friendship bracelets that were popular when I was in the seventh grade. Far out. One sin off for nostalgia. This ear of corn Mrs. Robinson scene is taking way too long to- Oh, who am I kidding? I still have a boner. Holy sh 
Moving includes a makeout corner on the cob scene that is close enough to a lap dance that hurts me. Okay, it's time for me to go masturbate. The popcorn did it. These candles are being held up by their own wax, I guess for the seance, and is a terrible fire hazard. But you absolutely must take all the risks when calling the dead. So this movie wins again. Let's show them we're still here! I really don't think they thought you were gone, so you're just wasting ammo. Score another one for the good guys. I don't like this. Well, you're wrong. We have only ten minutes. When that clock starts striking six, I'll disappear. But Grandpa Seth, it's already on the 55 minute mark. That's only five minutes. Yeah, but five minutes of nilblog time is ten minutes, so movie gives more than enough time to vanquish evil. Together we can destroy the magic stone that gives the goblins their power. Grandpa Seth probably could have told Josh about destroying the magic stone earlier, but just think of the movie magic we would have missed. Grandpa Seth knows a good narrative when he sees one. Quick! Upstairs! How in the world did this movie not beat Dances with Wolves for Best Picture? It was between this, Goodfellas, Ghost, and Awakenings. Some say that it's probably Sofia Coppola's performance that may have prevented this movie from winning, but I've been studying her performance intently this whole movie and I found her nothing but delightful, so I'm gonna remove 314 sins in order to make up for this injustice. Get away, monster! I put this right up there with Get Away From Where You Bitch. No, hold on. I put it above that line. F*** you, aliens. I was about to ask where is the grandpa helper who only has 10 minutes before he's sucked back into hell? Shouldn't he be helping a ch but then I realized he's moving through the spirit world, and that documentary Insidious told me it was hard to navigate, so I'm the one who's wrong. I'm glad they made Grandpa Seth such a happy person. So easy for this guy to be grumpy, and he's not. You can only take out the contents when you really need it. Movie articulately explains why you should conserve natural resources and magic sandwiches. These goblins found these humans using chicken foot water finding sticks, and I ain't even mad. That's amazing. Oh no wait, those are arrows. Even better! One ear of corn caused all this popcorn, and I'm not even talking about the movie anymore. I want to know where to get my hands on this because self-multiplying popcorn is a goddamn small business gold mine and you know it. Look, she's shrieking and that's okay, but she just attacked the dude in the trailer and that amounted to kissing him around an ear of corn and then walking out when all the corn started popping, leaving said dude alive. So I guess I'm suggesting maybe she's not that scary as all. If they had the power to do this the whole time, they must have had the power to make me love this movie even more. It's pretty obvious Grandpa Seth's hands aren't even touching the rock. I'm sure he has a good reason and all, considering his role in the story, but the casual viewer must go mad at this apparent inconsistency. But I'm no casual viewer. Also, I kept waiting this whole movie for Jennifer Aniston to show up, until I remembered she's in Leprechaun, not Troll 2. Still, she's hot though, so one sent off. Remember, it's only the power of goodness that can defeat the goblins. I mean, if a man who came straight from hell knows that, then surely we can all learn a thing or two. I'm going to cry remove five sins for this touching scene. Also, by touching scene, I mean the stone touching. I personally would have never thought that touching the magic stone would break it, but that's why I'm not in the movie business, and I leave that to the professionals. A double-decker bologna sandwich! The sandwich of kings is what I always say. He called this a double-decker bologna sandwich, but this is like an octuplet decker bologna sandwich, if not more. And that sounds like a sin until you think about it and realize how much you love bologna. I stop watching, but I assume whatever's on screen is awesome. You might be tempted to feel sorry for the apples not included in the bowl and left behind in the fridge, but I would encourage you to instead think how happy and liberated those apples that were included in the bowl must be feeling right now. The director said, let's have your character eat an apple. It'll make you look like even more of an asshole. But that's exactly what her character needed. Plus, it's nutritious. They're my mouth. <laughs> Another line of dialogue so hilarious, I can't be mad at stupidity. Also, wait a minute, didn't Josh and his family destroy the goblins when they touched the wall with their goodness? What kind of bullshit is this to make them come back to life and eat his mom? You just wanted to have a whammy ending. You were doing great until now. I'm gonna have to add all the sins back for this nonsense. Good God. You know the rules, and so do I. Your age television was called books, and this is a special book. It was the book my father used to read to me when I was sick. And Soylent Green is made out of people. This isn't even a good victory song. No, we're not doing this. This is embarrassing. Was I dreaming? Are you an angel? Is this real life? How? I am Mother Nature, and the time has come for plans to take back the world so rightfully ours. The oppressors of generations who have kept you down with myths of opportunity, and we give it back to you, the people. Gotham is yours. I am completely miserable, San Diego. 
so damn hot. Milk was a bad choice. Arnold, what's happened? I'm Root. Look, help me take this mask off. But you'll die. No, please, ma'am, I beg you. Uh, what are you gonna do? To, what are you gonna do to me with that? Obviously, you're not a golfer. My little buttercup has the sweetest smile. Lord of light, come to us in our darkness. We offer you these false gods. Take them and cast your light upon us. <laughs>